And many Jamaicans on TBJ's uh, social media pages have been reacting to the DPP's ruling. Here to help us delve deeper in the ruling is our legal correspondent, Dion Jackson Miller. Dion, let's just get straight into it. People have been dismissing the ruling, questioning how could no one be charged? On what basis, in your opinion, did this ruling turn? Well, as is her. Her, her normal habit, um, Janela, the DPP did issue a, a lengthy ruling. It's about 15 pages. Now, one of the issues is that they looked at the statements. They took quite a number of statements from other people. Now, if it were just, let's be frank, if it were just Enzinga King and the police, there's so much distrust in relation to the police that I don't think that is something that would be accepted by the public. But they have other witnesses. So they have, for instance, Enzinga King's um, allegations were that her hair was cut and then she was taken to the cell. They have statements from two detainees who, who stated that Miss King came into the cell with shoulder length locks and that she proceeded over the next two days to pull out her own locks. And I just wanted to read um, just briefly, one of those witnesses said, quote, she started to pop out her hair with her hand. She took about two days to sit down and pick out all the hair. It was not the police lady that cut off the hair. If she popped them out one by one. And the other witness said the same thing. Over two days, she said, Miss King um, uh, took out her own hair. They also have statements from two other witnesses who were schoolmates, as the DPP alluded to, schoolmates who said that Miss King told them, each of them separately, that she was the one who had cut their own hair. In addition, they have some forensic evidence. Again, Miss King had said her hair was cut before she went into the cell. They have photographs and evidence that there were locks in the vent in the cell in which Miss King had been staying, had been held, and they tested those locks and, and they did find um, DNA evidence belonging to Miss King. But then the question now arises, if I make a claim, shouldn't the veracity of that claim be tested in the court? And it's a reasonable question, but I do think we have to realize that Miss King is not the only person in question here. There are two police officers who have been accused of assault. The DPP's office has a responsibility to ascertain that they do have a viable case for prosecution before they go ahead and lay charges against two people who will then be put on interdiction, who may have part of their salary suspended, who may have their lives affected or ruined in various ways. I can tell you as defense counsel, when you get a file from the prosecution, the first thing you do is sit and you start going through and you make a list of the inconsistencies. And the DPP office has outlined a list of inconsistencies in Miss King's own statements. It's not just that she is saying one thing and, and the, the other witnesses are saying another, but in various accounts, for instance, of her arrest, of what happened in court, they, they've pointed to a number of of inconsistencies and therefore come to the conclusion that they could not mount a viable prosecution here. Now, Dion, the DPP is saying that uh, Ms. King could pursue civil remedies. What exactly could that involve? The first thing to remember is that in civil court, the standard of proof, proof is different. So when you are charged in criminal court, you have to, we all know the phrase, you have to be found guilty with, um, beyond a reasonable doubt. What we normally say to juries in Jamaica is that you have to feel sure. In civil court, when you sue, it's a different standard of proof. You, you have to be, it has to be more likely than not. To be so. So the standard of proof is lower, so it's easier to make your case. It, you always, though, have to remember that in civil court, there is a legal phrase, he who avers must prove. In other words, if I'm suing you, I have to bring the evidence that says you have done whatever it is I have said you, you, you have done. So um, Mr. Buchanan has said he has instructions to go to civil court to sue. So in that case, he would then have to make his submissions. He would have to have his witnesses, and we, we would see what we would see. So, Dion, today is Wednesday. Um, what's happening on all angles? You know, we were supposed to do long COVID, but we have put that on hold because we thought we needed to go into this ruling more, talk about the issues. So the entire program is going to be devoted to the Nzinga King ruling. Thank you so much, Dion Jackson Miller, our legal correspondent.